Hello traders at CNC Markets. Welcome to another update by RRG Research for Monday the 16th of May and I'm recording it on Friday the 13th before the market opens. My name is Julius de Campenaar and I'm presenting to you from Amsterdam in the Netherlands. For today, um, I want to look at a few things, uh, starting with what happened in stock markets around the world in the past week, uh, uh, weeks maybe I should say, because uh, there's quite a lot going on. Now, if we look at a group of major stock market indexes and we're looking at a weekly RRG, a weekly relative rotation graph here, um, you see that this group is kind of evenly spread out around the benchmark. The benchmark center of the chart here is the MSCI World Index. What you got to bear in mind is that this is all based on relative strength. So this, this doesn't say anything about direction of price because we all know that the general tendency for the stock market is going down. What this tells you is which stock markets are outperforming or doing better than the MSCI world. Um, and I think that image is kind of clear. It will become even more clear when we switch to the daily. But what I want you to watch here is that um, it's predominantly the, the NASDAQ and the S&P. And obviously the S&P is a very big chunk of the MSCI World Index. It's a big driver of that. So when that starts to turn around, it is by default that other countries have to move the other way. And if, you, if I zoom in on that S&P tail here, then you can see what just happened. It's, it, it moved in the right direction. And then last week, it, it sharply hooked around. Um, and that's a, a very significant sign, I think. And you can see kind of a similar rotation in the NASDAQ, uh, as well as in Russia. I'm not sure whether that is uh, a market you want to follow at the moment, but it's still there. And what you also see is that there are a few other markets like the Nikkei in Japan, the, UK, the um, FTSE in, in the UK, Australia, which is the uh, ASX 200, AS51 is the ticker symbol. And you got Europe with the DAX and, and the stocks index um, starting to improve. Again, this is all based on relative strength. So um, don't, don't mistake this for price direction. Now, if we move to the daily version of this RRG, then it becomes even more clear because you've got the NASDAQ here, which has turned around inside the improving quadrant. That's quite a negative sign. So it started to improve, but never reached leading and is now hooking back towards lagging. That means that we're starting a new down lag in an already existing relative downtrend. And for the S&P, it's not that bad, but obviously that's much closer to the benchmark because it's such a big chunk of the MSCI world. But you see a similar rotation. It, it tried to move into the leading quadrant and is now hooking around and moving back to, uh, to lagging. And also here in this cluster, if you look carefully, here you will find the tail for the Dow Jones Industrials. And that is also coming out of the uh, leading quadrant, moving into weakening. And you see that the European, the Western type markets are uh, moving the opposite direction. Now, once again, it's all based on relative. And I can, I can do a, um, I, can, I can tell you, I can show you um, a, a different picture because here the benchmark is the MSCI world um, that makes it relative. If I change that benchmark to an annual rate of return of 0%, then we are looking at relative strength versus 0%. And then you can see, basically that means that we're looking at, uh, at price direction. And then you can see that all these indexes are in downtrends. They're all on the left-hand side of the chart. They're almost all inside the lagging quadrant, which means that the price trends are down. Um, by the way, it gives traders a great opportunity um, to play around with pair trades because you can play the strong ones and short the, uh, the other ones and try to see if you can find uh, profitable pairs using this type of approach. Um, obviously, the S&P is a very important chunk. I already told you that. Here's the weekly chart of the S&P, and I think that is a very weak chart at the moment. We had a very nice run-up. We broke important resistance uh, support level. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we're now sort of hovering and I made that a very thin line because I don't think it is a major level. I think the next major level in the S&P 500 is around, let's say, 3,500, uh, which is still a long way to go. But the most important takeaway for this chart is 
it's probably that the upside is very limited. So uh, for the time being, uh, I wouldn't be too strong on the S&P 500. And we can look at that uh, here on the daily. It makes it even worse. You can see that there, you know, around 4,100, 4, there's already a lot of resistance for the S&P 500. Quickly go to the U.S. sectors because something interesting is going on in the U.S. sectors. If you look at the RNG for the U.S. sectors, this is the weekly RNG for U.S. sectors. And I did something here. Uh, you will notice that there are bubbles on the endpoints of these tails. The bubbles represent the market capitalization of these sectors. And now it becomes interesting because what you can see here is that the biggest sectors in terms of market capitalization, and I'm going to I'm going to put energy out of the picture to zoom in on the others because energy is so way to the right. You can see that the biggest sectors so is inf information technology. And I'm not sure if you can read that dialogue, but the lowest line tells you market cap as 26.4% at the moment. So information technology, 26. Consumer discretionary is a little bit above 11. Financials is uh, 10 and a half. Together, they are almost 50% of the market capitalization in the U.S., 50% of the market capitalization in the US is underperforming the S&P 500. That means that there has to be a lot of strength from the other sectors to pull that market up. That's not going to happen. In order for a strong bull market, you do need these big sectors to lead and to outperform the S&P 500. This is a very defensive rotation. These are growth sectors. These are offensive sectors and the, def the, the defensive stuff is healthcare, is consumer staples, is utilities. And as you can see, they're all still inside the leading quadrant. Healthcare is rolling over a little bit, but it's still very high on the RS ratio scale. Um, so for me, this still remains a, uh, a very defensive rotation in the US. And if we top it off with the charts for information technology, you can see that that is a big top information uh, that has just been completed. We're looking for support somewhere 2100 in the uh, information technology index and for consumer discretionary, kind of similar, uh, bro breaking 1260, 1270 a couple of weeks ago. We're now threatening 1160 and the real, the real support, I think, um, is coming from the, the, the peak in early 2020 and a little cluster here, which is 1050. All in all, um, a pretty weak outlook for stock markets around the world especially for the US. Nevertheless, there, there can always be bounces. There, there will be trading opportunities. Um, but the upside, as far as I can see, is still very, very limited. And that won't change anytime soon, I'm afraid. Thank you for watching. And I hope to see you again next week. Same time, same place.